Welcome to r slash ask writer, where we answer the question, people who have stories they want to share, but haven't found the question relevant to them. What are your stories? Our first reply is from Garbage Goat. One late night coming home from an evening out, my husband, a friend of ours, and myself rounded the corner to the stairs leading to our apartment when we saw it. Sitting about halfway up the stairs was an opossum eating a sandwich. He was sitting on the stairs just like people do, on his butt, with his little feet sticking out. And in his hands was an honest-to-god Subway 6-inch sandwich, still in the paper, but slightly unwrapped just like people eat it. <laughs> it was like he was a tiny person in an opossum suit. There was just something so human-like about everything he was doing. We stood there for what felt like ages watching this opossum eating and trying to figure out what to do. No way we were going to risk walking past him. We finally decided to take the long way around back to the second set of stairs. But as long as I live, I'll never forget that opossum. It was such a truly surreal moment. So generally speaking, it's pretty rare that someone would just accidentally lose or throw away an entire 6 inch sandwich, which makes me wonder. Did some guy just go to Subway and specifically buy a 6 inch sandwich to just give to this opossum like, Here you go little dude, enjoy. Our next reply is from Mifunbri. I love my backpack. It's nothing fancy, just a bog standard element rucksack, but I picked it out and it's like the only fashion brand article that I own. I remember the kids in my middle school flipping out over element gear back in the day, so it brings back fond memories. Anyway, a couple of years ago, I was backpacking slash road tripping across Canada. We stopped in the city of Hope for a bite to eat before continuing on to Kelowna where we had booked accommodation for a couple of nights. I don't quite remember how, but when we arrived around 9pm and unpacked the car, I couldn't find my backpack. Bear in mind that my backpack had everything important in it. My passport, house keys, iPad, Canadian currency, my favorite sweatshirt, phone charger, etc. I figured the worst, that we had forgotten to lock the car while we were in the cafe and someone had yoinked it because I couldn't remember bringing it with me into the shop. I did not get a lot of sleep that night. The next day I called the diner just in case I had forgotten it inside. The nicest girl answered the phone and said that yes, there was a backpack there. I asked if she could send it out to Kelowna and just take whatever it cost out of the cash envelope in the bag. She agreed immediately to send it out that evening and I hung up, relieved. Unfortunately, it being a weekend, it didn't arrive before we were due to leave the area on a 7 day camping trip through Alberta. So I asked the Airbnb owner if they could send my backpack on to our next stop in Calgary to a UPS drop off point or whatever and again just help themselves to some cash. She agreed and I left on a weekend long trip with no phone signal camping in the Rockies. It was a great week. I almost forgot that I was missing just about everything I would have needed to get back home to Europe. I remember finally understanding what Bilbo says in The Lord of the Rings. I want to see the mountains again, Gandalf. Mountains, and then find somewhere where I can rest. I still wish that I could go back there and do it all over again. We got back to Calgary on Canada Day, so everything was closed, which meant another night of worrying. But the next day, I was first in line at the UPS store to pick up my parcel. It was such a relief seeing that familiar shade of burgundy when I opened it up, and everything was there, minus about 40 bucks in shipping costs. Whenever I look at my bag, I remember how nice people can be when you just ask them for help. They went out of their way to help an idiot stranger get his bag back, and I remember all the more vividly that wonderful trip through that amazing country. Well OP, that's because this happened in Canada where people are known for being nice. If you had tried this in America, I'm not sure your backpack would have made it back to you, unfortunately. Our next reply is from Rebel. Back in high school, I worked as kennel help at a vet's office. One day we ran out of sink cleaner and some other various products necessary for work. The vet sent me to Walmart to stock us up. I loaded about 10 or 15 cans of Comet and a few jugs of Clorox in the buggy and I headed over to get something on the other side of the store. As I rounded a corner, I almost collided with another lady's buggy. This lady looked down and all but screamed, Is there a sale? On Comet? Oh my god! And she took off running with her buggy towards the cleaning aisle. I tried very hard to catch her and tell her that it was for work, but she was absolutely determined to grab the rest of the Comet. So if you were accidentally scammed by a teenager into buying a ton of Comet in 1984 or so, please know that I tried to stop you. Our next reply is from Kamat Melon. I haven't told this story in a while, but Uber Eats scammed me out of $2,000 and ruined my 20th birthday. 
It was pretty much my first birthday where I was on my own, and I didn't celebrate with my family at all since I was a five hour drive away at college. It also fell on a Tuesday, so I wasn't able to do anything with friends either. The plan was to grab dinner at an Indian place that Friday to celebrate. I got out of class early, and my only celebration was to order some IHOP through the Uber Eats app. It was like my third time using it or something. Anyways, I got some chicken tenders for 16 bucks, then took a 5 hour nap. Real exciting. I woke up at around 8pm after all the food places on campus closed. So I figured, screw it, it's my birthday, let's order out twice. So I tried to get some chicken nuggets from McDonald's delivered. I press confirm order, the page loads, and I get an error. Okay, strange. Let's try that again. Another error, and I try again. I google the error code, and I see that this code pops up whenever a card gets declined. That can't be right, the meal was like 13 bucks. And at that time, I had about $1,000 in my bank account. For anyone who has a student wallet through PNC, you know that it's basically three accounts in one. You have a checking account and two savings accounts that are all linked to each other. As a broke college student, this was quite literally all that I had to survive on. So I checked my bank account, and every single account was cleared out. I had over 30 different pending transactions, all from Uber Eats. They ranged from $0.99 cents to $104, going until every single one of my accounts was emptied. I was sitting at about negative $600 the last time I checked. So, obviously, I am freaking out. My bank was closed, so I couldn't call them. I go to Uber Eats customer service and they ask me to list every transaction, which I do. They confirm the transactions came from them. Then, the agent tells me that these are just temporary holds that they always do and the money won't actually leave my account. Okay, but why over 30 transactions? I spend hours trying to figure out what exactly went wrong in their system, and each agent keeps giving me the same copy and pasted response. The charges won't post to your account, just wait. The thing is, with debit cards, they treat pending transactions as if the money is already off your card, so I couldn't use my money at all. I was helpless. The next morning, I called my bank as soon as they opened. My card was cancelled and they had to dispute each charge. There were so many transactions that they couldn't all fit under one report so they had to be split into three reports. Usually when you dispute a transaction, the bank gives you a provisional credit which is a temporary refund of your money. They could only provisionally refund me on one of the reports which still left me at about negative $150. I would have to wait about two months until the investigation ended and I would get the rest of my money back. Oh, and guess what? The money did leave my account. Not only that, but I was charged $35 in overdraft fees 10 different times. And when I went back to Uber Eats about this, they kept repeating the same message that these transactions wouldn't post. But they already posted. That entire week was a mess. I was stranded at college with literally no money. My family struggles enough, and my mom had to skip a few bills to send me cash through MoneyGram. I couldn't have money come through my bank account because it would get eaten up by all the fees that I had accrued. I even cancelled the get together that Friday, though we were able to go in the end. Happy birthday to me, I guess, and screw Uber Eats. Our next reply is from Midnight Eyes. A friend of mine from grad school had previously been a skydiving instructor in Colorado and had jumped more than 600 times. One of these times, for whatever reason, he had his wallet in his suit and it fell out. It fell to earth somewhere and he figured, that sucks, but oh well, he had absolutely no chance of finding it. Separately, a man in rural Colorado was found murdered. Turns out, in their remote cabin where he lived with his daughter, he had been sexually abusing her and she finally had enough and killed him. The police searched the house and all of his property and found my friend's wallet in the trunk of his car. The police thought to themselves, this stupid effing murderer left his wallet in the dude's trunk. This is going to be the easiest arrest ever. My friend had to give this super believable alibi of, it couldn't have been me, officer. Actually, that wallet fell out of my pants while I was skydiving. And then OP clarifies in an edit, my friend was never arrested, but he was questioned and he had to have his story corroborated. From what I remember of him telling me the aftermath, the cops knew early on that it was the daughter, so she might have confessed. When the cops cleared my friend, they told him the father had taken all of his cash. They have no idea why he kept the wallet though. So, you're telling me the type of man who would abuse his own daughter is also the type of man who wouldn't return a lost wallet? Who would have guessed? 
You know what's crazy about this story is that if like I was watching a TV show and this was like a murder mystery or whatever and this happened in the story. So you're watching a pair of cops try to solve a murder and they go to the crime scene and they find this wallet. Then they drive all over the state trying to find the owner of this wallet and they find this guy and he just says, Oh yeah, so that fell out of my wallet while skydiving. I have nothing to do with the murder. I feel like if I were watching that happen in a TV show, I would get angry at the writers for writing something so stupid. Like, come on writers, you honestly expect me to believe that some guy's wallet would just happen to land on a crime scene so that we can have this waste of time red herring to add drama to the episode? But apparently things like this do happen, so I guess it's true. Sometimes reality really is stranger than fiction. Our next reply is from Stompinator. My great-grandmother lived in a nursing home for the last years of her life. She was about 95 years old, with diminished eyesight and hearing when this happened. My great-grandmother told my mother that she was afraid of the lady in black. What woman in black? My mother would ask. The one that stands at my bed every night. I think she's finally coming to get me. Naturally, my mother dismissed this as a figment of my grandmother's imagination. One evening when my mother was visiting, my great-grandmother told her, I think I'm going to die tonight. Can you stay? I don't want to be alone when the lady in black comes for me. So my mother stayed at her bedside, sleeping uncomfortably in an old armchair. Suddenly, my mother awoke to some noise that she couldn't immediately pinpoint. But she saw a figure in a long black gown standing at the far end of my grandmother's bed. My mother's scream must have woken the whole nursing home, but it especially scared the lady in black. The lady in black turned tail, left the room, and ran into one of the nurses who came running to investigate my mother's scream. It turns out, the lady in black was my great-grandmother's demented and bedridden neighbor. Nobody knew that she could actually walk, let alone dress up in her favorite black dress and wander the nursing home at night. Apparently, she was seen by some of the other inhabitants who, fearing that they would thought to be crazy, simply never talked about the ghosts that would enter their rooms at night to stand at their beds and water their plants. Our next reply is from CBR. I pulled a stranger's dildo out of my pocket at the pub. I went to buy a new jacket at Target. I tried on the one on the rack, but it was one size too small. I went back to the rack, grabbed the next size up, and went straight to the counter and paid for it. The cashier throws the jacket in the bag. I head home and throw the bag on the table. The next night, my friends turn up at my house and announce to grab me to go to the pub. I get dressed, grab the bag with the jacket, and jump in the car to head off to knock off a couple of frothies. A few drinks later, we decide to head home, so we get outside, and it's definitely jacket weather. I throw the jacket on, and the boys give me a hard time about how fancy it is. I put my hands in the pocket, and I find an object in there. <laughs> I have no idea what it is or how it got there, so I pull it out in front of everybody. I'm left standing there, in my fancy new jacket in front of the pub with the lads, with a stranger's dildo in my hand, and no idea how it got there. Of course, nobody believed that I had no idea how that thing came to be in my possession. It's almost 20 years later, and I'm still curious about the series of events that led to somebody needing to hide their dildo in a jacket on the rack at Target. Why they didn't return to get it, and if they did return, what their reaction was when they couldn't find the jacket. Our next reply is from Tanika F. My family pet growing up was named Arwen, and she was a massive Airedale Terrier. She was the light of our lives, truly the world's best dog. She would herd the chickens and let the baby chicks nestle into her fur and nap on her as she sat quietly in the sunshine, not moving lest the peeps be disturbed. But her most heroic act came when my brother Liam, who was 10 at the time, was trying to move our basketball hoop into the yard for the summer. My brother didn't notice the two rattlesnakes coiled up under the base. But Arwen did. She leapt in front of Liam, between him and the snakes, and both Liam and my dad, who was nearby, saw both of the snakes strike. Dad ran and grabbed Liam, pulled him away, pulled Arwen aside with his other hand, then sent Liam running to grab the hatchet to dispatch the snakes. We took Arwen inside and put her on her bed, and we called the vet. The vet said that he would come out to put the dog down, but if she was bitten by two snakes, there was basically no chance that she'd live. But my mom said there was no way in hell that she was putting her baby down without a fight. So she did some googling and found out that just loading the poor dog with Benadryl can counteract snake venom. So that's what my mom did. Arwen lay still, swollen and bleeding for three days. But then she got up. And she walked around. 
and she lived for five more years, dying at the old age of 17. She was the best dog. See, this is what I'm talking about with the alien dog rant, and if you saw my other video then you know what I'm talking about. We on Earth have an animal who's fuzzy and adorable and gentle, but if there's a dangerous creature, this animal will leap between you and this dangerous beast and protect you from that beast. So if you're an alien and you're worried about space snakes or whatever, then come to Earth and get a dog, and that dog will protect you and your alien family from literally anything. And if you have absolutely no clue what I'm talking about, go watch my earlier videos. Our next Reddit post is from Eric the Redditor. My wife was on her first Zoom meeting last March in the kitchen. I asked if I could be off screen cooking breakfast quietly and she said yes, as long as I'm quiet and not distracting. I wound up burning what I was cooking, causing lots of smoke. <laughs> then, when I was trying my best to get the situation under control, my robe accidentally landed on the burner and started smoking. So, basically, my wife told me not to be distracting and I wound up lighting myself on fire. To her credit, she maintained poise and completely ignored my situation. We still laugh about it a year later. Is it- <laughs> Is anyone else imagining this, like, businesswoman sitting in front of the computer talking about TPS reports? Me <laughs> Meanwhile, her husband is running around in the background on fire with his robe just screaming his head off? Our next reply is from Deracination. One time I was walking across campus stoned. I'm walking by two kids, aged maybe 10 and 5, like 20 meters away. I'm not sure why they were there without an adult, but they were. The younger one looks at me and yells, Hey! I like your shirt! So I yell, Uh, thanks. He responds, And your backpack's okay. I don't respond. The older one yells, He's working on his compliments. We both continue on our ways. A few hundred meters away, a dude about my age walks up with a tray of cookies. He says, Hey, you want a cookie? I'm like, Yeah, I'd love a cookie. What's the cookie for? He says, No reason. I'm just handing out cookies. You want two? I say, Yeah, I'd love two cookies. Thanks a lot, bud. So I take two cookies and they were awesome. It was a pretty good walk. That was r slash ask reddit and if you like this content check out my patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new reddit videos every single day.